So this is a hazy IPA I made a little while ago, and this is a hazy pale ale that I brewed using all six tips that I'm about to show you. Now, don't get me wrong, this beer is delicious, but I'm a professional brewer. I can't market this as a hazy beer if it's gonna be this clear. So I had to do some research. I had to figure out why my beers had been hazy in the past and what actually made them hazy. And this is what I found. Just a note, these are not really in order of importance, just kind of where they appear in the brewing process, but the last one's probably the most important. Number one, add wheat or oats to your beer, flaked or malted. So wheat and oats are honestly just incredibly rich in protein. Now protein is what makes up most of the haze in your beer. It's called colloidal haze. It's synonymous with chill haze, but it's also a permanent haze as well. Proteins consist about 40 to 75% of that colloidal haze. So the more proteins that you're adding to your beer, the more that you're gonna get a chance for these polyphenols to combine with the proteins to create a permanent haze that doesn't just necessarily flocculate out. And I also recommend adding wheat and oats because they add such a good body. I add malted and flaked wheat and I add flaked oats to every single hazy batch I do because it just, it, it gives such a nice body and a good texture and a really nice taste along with those proteins as well to give it that haze and just a really nice mouthfeel. Number two, 30 minute boil. Look, the reason that I'm suggesting this is because of the protein bake, and that's really it. Protein break, and we just talked about how important protein is, is what you're trying to minimize as much as possible to keep the haze in your beer. Now, I personally don't add bittering hops to my hazies, so I don't have to worry about a 60 minute edition and account for that. I also, as a professional brewer, get access to fresh malt. So I'm not really worried about DMS either. I can do a 30 minute boil and not have any problems with off flavor. Now, if you do not have access to that, let's say your homebrew shop just really isn't restocked that frequently, don't worry about it. Skip this step and come back to it later. But I, I do recommend you give this a try just once. And if you develop off flavors, then feel free to skip this step. So once the 30 minute boil is over, it brings us to our next step, which is step three cooling down your wort after the boil to then add hops. This is normally done during the whirlpool process or flame out right before you send it to your fermenter. What this does is it allows you to, just like how the protein break separates the protein from the wort, having high temperatures when you're adding your hops during the whirlpool will also essentially cause them to flocculate and settle out. And that's not what we want. We want the, these polyphenols being added from the hops to then bind to the protein. I personally cool down my whirlpool or flame out to add hops because I like to go for zero IBU hazies. I think that you get to add more hops already, which then contributes to more polyphenols. It gives you more aroma and flavor into the beer without adding all this extra bitterness. Now, right after this is step four. Step four is dropping your pH in the kettle before you send it to your fermenter. There's been a study showing that the optimal range for haze production is between 4.5 and 5.0 pH. Most beers, if you're, let's say you're mashing it at about 5.2, which you should, that should be your goal. Anything from 5.2 to 5.4 is optimal. Let's say you start mashing in at 5.2. By the time you get it to the kettle or you've done all of your water, your beer is probably even at best still at 5.2, which is not in the correct range for optimal haze stability. So you add a little bit of phosphoric acid to your kettle after you're done boiling. So what that does is while you're adding your hops to the kettle, like we just talked about, and during fermentation, you're now in the optimal pH range for haze production or haze stabilization. And that brings us to the next step, which is step five, dry hopping during fermentation. You've just dropped your pH in your kettle to the optimal pH range. You need to dry hop it while it's still in that pH range. During fermentation, your yeast is going to start eating all the sugars and produce ethanol. And that's going to slowly drop down the pH in your beer to well below 4.5. So that's why I recommend dry hopping at least a third of your dry hop as soon as your wort hits the kettle right before fermentation. You've just dropped your pH you know that it's in the optimal range. You're gonna get a bit of hops in there that are gonna add a bit of haze to your beer. And then you're able to get a good amount of haze from those hops before fermentation starts to bring all of that down to a point where it's not in the optimal range. This is gonna help with a lot of haze stability. It's also gonna help with flavor. Biotransformation of hops help with 
hay stability, as well as a good amount of like aroma characteristics that are super unique to dry hopping early in fermentation. That's why I always recommend double dry hopping my hazies because it just adds such a unique characteristic through the hops and it helps with hay stability. So about a third in the beginning and then two thirds once fermentation is close to finish. So now we get to the most important tip of all. Number six, yeast. I say that yeast is the most important step is that's because I have found the best results with changing my yeast. Omega Yeast has come out with a study saying that they have found different strains of yeast that are haze positive. And what that means is no matter what they did, they did different trials, specific beers, same way with different types of yeast. One specific type of yeast would perform better in haze stability than the others. They've got a couple here, their Cosmic Punch, their Brit 5, their Brit 1, and their Voskovic. Each one of those is a haze positive yeast that they found to keep haze better in their beers uh, despite any other changes. So I personally recommend Brit 5 from Omega. I've had great success with them. They've It's always kept my beers hazy. Uh, another one is London Fog from White Labs. That's another great haze positive yeast. A couple honorable mentions are Fermentus S33. I've had success with that, although I have had problems with haze every so often, so it's not a be all end all. Another one is Juice Yeast A38. It has a really good flavor profile, but it, ha it has some problems every so often. And another one that I haven't tried, but have been recommended is Fermo Ale New E from AEB. So if you're gonna do anything, change the yeast first, see if you can get an Omega Pitch, Brit 5 works best or a White Labs pitch, which is London Fog, also works best. Those are gonna give you the best chance at keeping haze stability in your beer. Cheers, friends. I hope you learned a little bit of something. I left a recipe in the description below so that you can take all of these new techniques and apply them to your beer. And then let me know how it turns out. And if you got any questions, go ahead and leave a comment and I'll do my best to help you out in any way, shape or form. Also, if you did like this video and you wanna brew even more different unique beers, go ahead and check out this video right here. I made a coffee beer, it's fantastic. Also, like and subscribe, really helps the channel and you get notified every time that, you know, I come out with a new video like this. So, thanks guys. Don't forget to keep it sudsy and I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>